So if you guys have been in this channel for a while, you'd know that every year or two, I try to go over what the best players in the world are using in terms of camera settings, sensitivities, stuff like that, just to give you guys a general idea of what's good to use. And if you're starting out today playing Rocket League for the first time, this video will help you a lot, getting a, a good idea of what to use at the start and not getting any bad habits using any settings that aren't actually that good for you. There technically are no truly bad camera settings. You know, if you can see your car in full and you can see the field, to an extent, you know, there's really no bad setting. In that aspect, obviously, if you go into something that's like this, I don't recommend that. That's probably the closest thing to a bad setting that you can uh, come up with. But outside of something like this, which I can't see my car at all, I'm still landing on the walls and stuff, you know, but it's just hard to get a, an idea of where everything's at. Outside of something like this, there really is no bad setting that you can go with, right? So I'm gonna go over settings in general and the ranges that you can use with each setting and I try to always give you guys an example of players that you know use certain settings and if you guys want to copy those players obviously there's going to be a link down below in the description to my liquipedia which will have my updated settings that should get updated pretty often I think they update it like every week or so so you guys have an idea of what I'm using if I do decide to change things here and there you know exactly what I'm using because I do change my settings somewhat often but it stays within this range that I'm going to explain to you guys basically to start off we got the game speed setting and all this stuff I would actually want to make a video on this in the future but I'll make a quick you know a little rant about it right now I think changing your game speed down to like 50% I know it seems like painfully slow and it's gonna feel kind of weird but I'm telling you, this is a cheat code. If you ever feel like your car is really heavy, this has been a thing for years now. If you ever feel like your car is really heavy, or if you feel like your movement just feels sluggish in general, go to 50%. It's gonna feel super weird, it's gonna feel odd, but I'm telling you, after a bit doing this, you're gonna feel like a different player. Like you're gonna go back from there, it's probably gonna even work a little bit here. The game's gonna feel 10 times faster. You have to do it for like 10 minutes. I don't think the full effect ended up working out there but you have to do it for like 10 minutes go slow motion everything's gonna feel really weird it's gonna feel super slow obviously that's the whole point but then once it's done once it's no longer slow motion you're gonna feel like a completely different player so definitely give that a try that's something that's very underutilized and i think it used to be used a lot by pros i think there's a few players that still do i know like yan uh the brazilian player who's extremely good extremely mechanical uses this a lot seen him on land he's practicing in slow mode the whole time his free play is entirely in slow motion and you don't get to do as many mechanics because you're playing in half speed obviously but you know it's, it's this weird placebo that makes you play so much smoother so much faster feeling you have better instincts for what to go for i think uh, in general it just helps a lot so i would definitely try out the game speed setting everything else here is whatever and we'll go into you can copy this obviously though we'll go into gameplay now all of this stuff you basically copy except for input buffer so these vary based on your internet i think if your internet's unstable you'd want to go with uh csts i'm pretty sure csts is the best if your internet's unstable and then i think sts is also good if your internet's unstable but i think csts is better from my experience so i would use i would use default if your internet's fine just use default if not then i'd go for one of those other two uh, it's not gonna help that much if your internet's bad Still gonna be pretty hard to play the game well but yeah these are the settings that i would go go for for over here obviously if you're in europe just switch to europe or wherever you're from all right on to camera settings now this is where it gets good so camera shake 100 percent never use this do not use camera shake this is gonna make the game miserable to play <laughs> every time i flip i don't know why wait, is it it's not as bad as i remember it to be i wonder why it's actually not as bad as I remember it to be. I remember it just being way worse, but it doesn't help you at all. Oh, that's what it was when you hit the ball. You see when I hit the ball, it has a, kind of looks cool though. <laughs> it has that effect. Why is the game kind of fun like this? Anyway, don't use this. If you want to be good, don't use this. Although it is addicting for some reason right now, at this moment. Something about that, that like little shake that's happening, I kind of, I don't like it. <laughs> don't use it though. It's not good. It is not good. Do not use camera shake. It is nothing but a hindrance to your focus and your ability to play smooth. So I definitely wouldn't use that. It doesn't help you in any way. Field of view. So this is something that people have experimented with over the years. Back like a few years ago, people actually used 100. 
And you see the game doesn't look that different, but you notice it a lot when you start hitting the ball or you're going for reads. Definitely changes your perspective on the game a bit. So I would definitely stay within the range of 107 to 110. I would say the majority of players use 109 or 110. You don't really see many players using 107 or 108, but I'd say they're, they're, these are acceptable uh, numbers. 107, 108 are very acceptable and you won't notice that big of a difference. But you have like some notable players in like First Killer uh, using 109. Uh, I can't think of anyone else like off the top of my head, but there's definitely other players who use 109. Um, one, it does make a difference, by the way. It's not just a quirk. It actually does feel different. It does make the game feel different. If you're a professional player, you 100% notice it. If you're someone that hasn't played that much, you probably won't notice it that much. But it definitely does make a difference. And it's not placebo. Like You can tell that it, uh, it affects the way the game feels. And then 110, I would say probably 90% of players or more use 110 in the pro scene right now. And obviously, you have uh, you know, some of the best players right now, Zen, Latira, using, uh, using 110. 270 is the most common is the most common uh, distance right now I'd say but the range is again still between like 250 to 280 and you see more people using 270 and below than you do see using 280 280 is very rare now so I, I will try to stay 270 and below you know within this 250 to 270 range the game feels drastically different the lower distance you go it makes you focus more on your car more on the touches you're making Whereas the further you go out, you're focusing more on what's around you a little bit more. So yeah, stay within that distance of 250, 270. But I would say that 110, 270 right now is probably the most common combination of field of view and distance. Now height and angle, they actually go together. So whatever your height is actually affects the way your angle looks in, uh, in regards to like how you're perceiving the touches with your car and everything like that. So the common uh, combinations are 100, negative three, 110, negative three, 100, negative five, 90, negative five, or 90, negative four. Those are the common combinations. Like Zen right now, probably considered the best player. He's on 100, negative three. That's very common. A lot of very good players use 100, negative three. I've used this for years on and off. I go between 110, 100, or I go 90, negative four, negative five. Those are my main settings. 100, negative three, or 90 negative four negative five usually i don't really do 110 anymore it doesn't feel as good as it used to but yeah i tend to go toward uh, 100 negative three pretty often so this is a pretty solid combination to use for height and angle if you guys are looking for something to use for this and it ends up looking like this or you have a pretty good idea of where the corners of your car the front corners which is pretty important and then you have a pretty good view of the field like if i'm sitting in the center here of my net just try to go like perfectly centered. I'm sitting in the center here. You can see the entire field like pretty easily, right? That's what you're aiming for with these settings is to have a good vision of your car, but also a good vision of the field. And you have to understand too, when you're dribbling the ball, you're going to lose some vision. So you don't want to be too close to your car with your settings so that when you're dribbling the ball, you, uh, you can't see anything at all, right? And this is a little trick to stop the ball fully, which I can make a video on if you guys care about it. But yeah, let's get back into the settings and make sure you keep that in mind that when you're dribbling the ball like this, you can't see directly what's behind the ball. And uh, there's obviously fixes for that gameplay wise, and I can explain that. But yeah, that's a big thing to keep in mind when you go close distance, you probably have much less vision of what's happening. Let me try to show an example of that. There you go. So you see how much less you can see, right? Versus when you go 270, you have an idea of what's on the left or right of the ball. And just to briefly go over that, to combat that, you want to try to dribble at angles so you can see. Imagine the opponent is the net right there, right? If I dribble like this, straight on net, this guy could challenge me and I'll have no idea he's challenging me. Whereas if I dribble like this, I see him the whole time and if he's coming, I can turn, I can cut it, I can uh, flick, I can fake shot, I can let it off my car, right? I have an idea of what he's doing. So always, always try to dribble with the idea that you're trying to have vision of the opponent and if they go behind the ball create vision of them again if they go behind create vision of them again i try to do that over and over again i'm doing a very very basic example obviously there's other things you can do but try to dribble with vision and then when they're going you can just do a backflip flick or whatever you want to do if you're playing 1v1 if you're playing twos and this guy's going you can just flick it over him you have another touch you can pass this middle free goal so just an idea for you guys to think about you know the camera settings even if it is blocking the view with the ball you can still dribble in a way that you can see around the ball you can still find ways to make that useful so keep that in mind for sure 
All right, let's get back into, oops, let's get back into the settings here. Hope that was like a decent example. I didn't really put too much thought into that for the video, just something that came in into my mind while thinking about the distance and stuff like that. So stiffness is a very important one and that affects a lot. And this is something that is purely preference and a lot of people will use different stuff for this. This might actually go in my net. Okay, it's good, it's fine. Sometimes that rolls badly. So let's go to stiffness and just as an example, Stiffness, basically, a brief explanation of it. The distance, like when you're going max speed, the distance your camera will change at that max speed. So you see my camera has zero change, basically. So whatever my camera settings are will be identical to what they are at max speed, at slow speed. So basically, it's a formula, I'm pretty sure, some, some form of formula. Um, if I go to 0.35, this is actually adding, I think at max speed, I think it's adding 65 distance to 270. So I think at max speed, we're looking at something like 335 distance right now at max speed. So if you were to go, just as an example of how stiffness works, if you were to go 330, let's go, let's round that up to 340, and then we go max stiffness. It should look about the same as, yeah, see, it's about the same as what we were on. That's a pretty basic understanding of how stiffness works, just so you guys you know, pretty good, pretty good knowledge of how that'll affect your settings. And I would recommend staying on the 270 range here, but messing with your stiffness. And that's why we'll go for stiffness of around 0 0.35, 0 0.4, because if you're dribbling at high speeds, it just gives you more view of the field, right? You're dribbling at high speeds, you see more of left or right around the ball, which is kind of what you're aiming for. You want to have good vision of what's going on around you. Vision and information in Rock League is actually extremely extremely underrated people don't think it's a uh, as important when you're talking to people that are lower rank they don't understand the importance of uh you know having a pretty good vision of the field and what's going on around you but i think that's one of the most underrated skills at rock league i think just having a general awareness of where everybody is is very difficult to uh to master and it's something that low rank players don't even think of they think mechanics are everything but mechanics go hand in hand with seeing your opponent and understanding how to outplay them like if someone's waiting back wall here and I have this much time, am I gonna boom this away? No, I'm gonna control. I see him back wall, he goes to the ground, now I'll pop over. I'm doing very basic stuff to show you guys examples. Another example would be, say I'm going for an air dribble here off the wall. And there's a guy pre-jumping off the ceiling. I'm not gonna go high anymore, I'm gonna fake. Let the ball come down to myself, and there we go. Now we have a free goal. Based off of what he's doing, I'm paying attention. My eyes are locked onto what the opponents are doing. And that's the level of understanding of car control mechanics that you want to have, where you can kind of turn your brain off to what you're doing with your, your car and be able to look at the opponent and see where they're placed on the field and see what they're trying to think to do, right? I'm always trying to counter what my opponent's doing. I'm not doing things based on what I want to do. I'm doing it based on what's the best play to get around my opponent. And uh, that's why you need settings that when you're at top speed, you get a little bit more vision, which is why I think the majority of people use somewhat lower stiffness. And uh, you won't see anyone, almost anyone use one stiffness. I think the range, the, the general range is between 70 and 0.3, I think it's like the, the main range. And you can see that's the biggest range out of all the, the settings. It's a very, very big range people use. Like angle is negative three to five, height is 90 to 110, right? This is 270, 250 to 270-ish. Maybe 280 can be used, and then you got 108 to, uh, to 110 is like the main uses of field of view. You can use 107, but you see the difference in drastic changes in the stiffness, right? It's very, 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 very vast. What you can use, and the preferences definitely vary between player to player, but yeah, I tend to aim between like 0.35 to 0.45 is my my sweet spot. It's what I've always used for years now. It's what everyone uses. Like Zen's on 3.5 right now. Vatir's on 3.5. A lot of very good players. So I'm trying to bring up players that are consistently performing right now to give you guys examples of what they're using. Because obviously my my places haven't been number one the last like four or five months, whatever. I try to use people that are at the top of the game right now. That way. It's a great example and obviously I try to I try to take from those players so I can get back to that form as well right because I've been there so many times and obviously want to continue to get back there so I always try to take things from them and I'm using them as an example for you guys to understand that even the best European players are using this stuff so anyway going on to swivel speed this is what you should be using I would say somewhere between five to like seven I mean this one again it's kind of preference everything here is preference but 
there's there's like a very few players that use 10 where you can flick around like crazy that you can like instantly go left or right which I, again can be useful but i think it's a little too much i think to have like a good control if you're a newer player 100 percent you want to go between like the five to six range i would go like six is like a perfect mid-range where you can quickly go left or right but you have this fine control still and that's why i think you'll lose when you go super high and then if you go super low you lose that that ability to go left or right quickly you see how long it takes me to get left see how long it takes me to get right right it takes a very long time so having that that middle range even somewhere in the fours is fine like something like this like you you have speed where you can go left or right but you have fine control and that's what you should be looking to have is fine control with uh with that right stick because you want to have precise movements and when i would use the right stick an example would be if i have a teammate out right here and i passed him I, I usually do something like this so I can have an idea of where everyone else is while I'm falling down. Because when you're falling down, that's like dead time. You're kind of just waiting to fall down, especially if you have no boost. So I would try to use that to look around the field, gain some information on where everybody's at, and try to make a play based on that. Try to make my next decisions based on what I see everybody else doing, right? That's that's a big, a big thing. Trying to think ahead based on the information that you're seeing on the field. So that's what I would do for swivel speed. And again, that's completely preference and it's what you want to do at the end of the day, what feels good to you. You might like it super low, you might like it super high, but I recommend that for someone that doesn't know what to use for it because I think it's a good mid range. Transition speed, the general range here is like one to 1.4. And again, it's a decent range, but I'd say the majority use 1.2. It's a good, you know, this is a good example of how fast it would be. And you'd use this most of the time when you're going for a boost and then it flicks back on. So I wouldn't recommend going to like 1.8 there's like very few players who use like two but you see how fast that is and that will definitely not feel good playing a whole five minute game like that and if you're flicking on and off a lot some people use two which is a straight snap on and off but again a little bit too jarring for me and that's why i like the range of 1.0 to 1.4 because all of these values are pretty pretty nice to your eyes and pretty nice to your head without giving you a headache um, so i use 1.2 most of the time that right now probably considered the best player it's on 1.0 so that's very slow and that's what i used to use for years this is what i used till probably last year 1.0 and this doesn't make that much of a difference a lot of players like modern day rock league a lot of players are just keeping their ball cam on constantly they don't even turn ball cam off i mean it's an important setting but it's really based on how you want to play right anyway that's going through all the camera settings i hope you guys had a good example of of everything i hope i did a decent enough job explaining that stuff let's get into controls and sensitivities let's do sensitivities first so basically for sense right now this is like an extremely good baseline 1.3 0.3 0.05 .0 0.7 now if you're on xbox controller this is going to feel different you have to mess with your controller dead zone i would go to 0.10 if you're on xbox controller it's going to feel a lot different 0.05 is really good for ps4 ps5 controller is also different you can go much higher sense on ps5 controller and it won't feel that high from my experience so i could i would recommend going to the two senses if you're using a ps5 controller and uh, dodge head zone this range anywhere between you know 0.5 up to 0.7 is probably good but i mean zen's using 0.8 so that's another example we can go all the way up to 0.8 it doesn't really matter this is something that i think he used for years though so i don't know if i'd recommend you guys using it because there's a chance you'll double jump you know you can accidentally side flip back flip there's a chance you'll accidentally just double jump and not flip when you have it this high so i would recommend a little bit lower for most of you guys but i think this is just a good general base and, and i would recommend again if you can just stay on settings as long as you possibly can that's the big thing in this game do not switch your settings constantly that's a mistake of mine i played this game since it came out since the day before release i got this game and i've changed my settings probably every month since the game's released and i still don't know exactly what to use but i have this general range and settings that i like to go back to so yeah, anyway, this is what I would I would recommend for, for sense. And again, you can use any sensitivity, mess with it as you'd like, but this is what I recommend if you want an example of what Zen is using, because he is probably the current best player, as I've been saying. It's this, this is the exact sense. I don't love the way 0.07 controller dead zone feels. And again, that's just preference for him, right? And uh, there's some other European players that use it right now, but again, it's all preference and it just helps with a little bit of uh, consistency with your sticks because some of the ps4 sticks can get you know worn down and stuff like that controls whatever you want to use right this is mainly preference but i use uh everything default except power slot on l1 and default air roll on l1 
Then I have my arrow right on square, and then I moved my scoreboard to R1, and then everything else is default. That's it. Everything else is default, and this is whatever you guys want to use. Whatever feels comfortable to your hands. If you're gonna be playing long, long periods of time, like make sure that your your layout feels very comfortable for you. Yeah, that's it for this. It's an interface now. Some important settings here. Nameplate scale is the biggest one, I think. This is, it's up to you guys, but I think having this a little bit bigger does help. I think having this at 150, again, information, I've preached this this whole video, and I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but I hope this, there's some good information here for you. Um, I think nameplate scale and having information uh, is extremely important. So having this a little bit bigger will help your eyes be able to just dart around and like catch where they're at where, without having to focus so much, especially for me, my eyes are a little bit worse, right? I have to wear glasses. So I think my eyes ability to focus is a little bit less than, than others. So I, I need a little bit of help with the nameplate skill for sure. Uh, I bumped this to 150. There's a lot of players that use this at 140, 150. And uh, there's definitely a good majority that still use it at default at 100. So it's up to you guys, but I think why not use this if you have the ability to do it. 200 becomes overwhelming, but I think 150 is a great mid range. So definitely try this out and you'll be able to see their nameplates behind the ball while you're dribbling, which will help you out again. It's a little bit of a cheat code, you know, a little bit of a, uh, not an exploit, but you know, take advantage of it if you have uh, the ability to raise an nameplate skill to give you a little bit of an advantage. Why not? Right? Why would you keep it small and give yourself less vision? There's no reason to do that. So anyway, we go down here. You guys should just copy this stuff. Some people use team color boost meter. On the bottom right, it just changes from uh, from blue to orange, orange is red. Um, I think it's more orange though. If you're using that, I don't like using it. I like using the default. I feel like it's brighter. I feel like it's much brighter, much easier for me to see how much boost I have when I'm on default. So I just use all this stuff. If you guys want to see when ball cams on or off, some people have that on for the aesthetic of it just looking cool. Um, I don't like having it on most of the time. I might, I use it sometimes, but like most of the time I don't like having it on. Ball arrow is important. I think it's still important. Uh, you don't need to have this, but I think it's important because if you're taking a boost, ball arrow to the left, left of my car. If you guys never noticed that before, there's a little arrow that flashes pointing toward where the ball is. That's pretty important. I think it's pretty important. It shows you it shows you what direction, you know, if, if you lost track, if say the second I turned off my ball cam, which I think this is a fault of the player, but the second I turned off my ball cam, a 50 happened and the ball launched toward that corner and that's my, my net over there as I'm rotating back, you know, I want to know that and I want to know that I have to go back quicker based on that ball arrow. But if you don't have that on, you're kind of oblivious to anything going on, right? So, so try to have that on. I think that's helpful and uh, use that when you can, because it does, it does make a difference. Again, information is very important in this game. I think that's not stated enough. This is what I use over here, everything off. This is very common for every pro. Everything off, and the only thing you'll see pros use is world detail high quality, because that adds this ball trail. I'll hit the ball hard to show you guys. Very, very simple hit, but I'll hit it hard one more time to show you guys. See the multiple ball trails. There's like five or six ball trails behind the ball. And then when you turn that off, also the grass becomes taller as well. Let's take a look at the grass by my, my wheels. And then I'll turn that off. The grass is now flat versus what it was. And then if you look at the ball trail, it's gonna be a single ball trail. I'll try to get one, one more big hit toward the backboard. And it's a single ball trail instead of multiple, right? So it depends on what your preference is. I, I actually used to have a placebo where I thought using multiple made reading the backboard double touches way easier. But again, I think that's more just preference of mine. Back then, I don't think it's like that anymore. Like I don't feel that way anymore about it. But anyway, going back to here, uh, FPS is based on your your hertz, whatever hertz your monitor is. So if you're on a 144, use 144, and you know, based on whatever your hertz is. Basically, I have a 390 hertz monitor right now, but I'm using 360. I think it just is a little bit more consistent. If I can't reach the frames of 390 consistently, I don't want to use that because then there'll be a little bit of stuttering and screen tears and stuff like that. So use this stuff, audios, whatever, based on your window settings or PS4 settings, Xbox settings, whatever you're using, uh, the audio is going to be a little bit different. So I wouldn't copy this exactly, but the main things I would have off crowd, ambient, and the music I have off, obviously for copyright reasons, but everything else. I would have off because it's just distracting more than anything and then master gameplay you want to have these beyond a certain threshold because it makes ball touches a little bit louder so again if you're not paying attention uh, you'll hear when someone hit the ball instead of, like if you're not actually having visual of them if your ball cams off whatever it may be chat doesn't really matter this stuff's
kind of pointless. But yeah. That's it for settings. Sorry if I rambled, guys. I tried not to ramble too much, but I wanted to give you guys as much information as possible because I haven't made a video on this in like probably a year and a half, almost two years now. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some valuable information out of this. Like I said, my Liquipedia, which has my updated settings, will be down below, linked in the description. Whenever you guys need to know my settings or you want new settings, go to my Liquipedia and it'll probably have updated stuff. I change my stuff pretty often, so you'll have whatever the up-to-date um, best settings are, whatever I think the best settings are. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have yourself a wonderful day or night, whatever time it is when you guys are watching this. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. I love y'all. Peace.